From the National Newsroom of the Canadian Press, I'm Karen Rebo. York Regional Police north of Toronto are investigating the discovery of three bodies inside a home in Richmond Hill. The force's homicide unit has been assigned to the case. Officers were called to do a wellness check at the home yesterday afternoon and arrived to find the three people dead. Investigators haven't given any information, though, about the nature of their deaths or their identities, but believe there is no threat to public safety. Nearly a month after two New Brunswick Brunswick men had their decades-old murder convictions overturned. The province has yet to act on a request for compensation and an apology. Ron Dalton of Innocence Canada says settlements for the wrongfully convicted usually take years, but this case, he says, is different. 76-year-old Robert Mailman was diagnosed with terminal liver cancer in November, and he's got about three months to live. Walter Gillespie is 80 years old. He lives on a pension and pays $800 a month for a small apartment in St. John. Dalton Dalton says the province needs to act fast because these men don't have much time. The smart thing would be to acknowledge that there were mistakes made. Uh, we would like to see them, of course, grant interim compensation so these gentlemen have uh, grocery money for the next uh, few months while they sit down in good faith and negotiate uh, a settlement for what they've been through. Premier Blaine Higgs said last week he intends to get some advice on what the ruling was and promised to do the right thing at the end of the day. The coast looks clear for public transit users in Metro Vancouver to plan their rides as usual. Coast Mountain Bus Company and the QP Union, representing its 180 transit supervisors, have both announced they have accepted the recommendations of a special mediator in an agreement that would avert another bus and sea bus strike this weekend. British Columbia's River Forecast Centre has downgraded flood advisories across the province's south coast as a stretch of warm, wet weather eases. And the recent wild swing in temperatures in B.C. has raised concerns about the impact on some local animals' health and possibly their survival. Temperatures in the Fraser Valley city of Abbotsford, for instance, have swung from a low of minus 15.4 on January 12th to a high of 18.4 on January 30th. And one researcher says she's particularly worried about the swing's impact on bees. UBC bee researcher Allison McAfee says the extreme highs and lows are particularly dangerous to bumblebee populations, since false springs could make queens emerge prematurely from hibernation. So what can happen if she emerges early and then there's a subsequent uh, drop in temperature, a cold snap, then um, she's very vulnerable. McAfee says the concern with bumblebees extends somewhat to honeybees, although the latter tend to have beekeepers to help manage the temperature risks. This is the Canadian Press. In sports, Austin Matthews made sure the Toronto Maple Leafs will be together at this weekend's NHL All-Star Game. Matthews and teammate Morgan Riley, along with celebrity captain Justin Bieber, took William Nylander with his first pick before adding fellow Leafs forward Mitch Marner with his next selection. Willie, maybe not so much. We were getting threatened by Mitch that if we didn't take him, he would do something bad. The NHL skills competition goes Friday night before Saturday's four-team All-Star Tournament. Savannah Harmon stole the show at the Professional Women's Hockey League Showcase on Thursday night. She had a hat trick to lead Team King to a 5-3 win over Team Kloss on the 3-on-3 exhibition that kicked off NHL All-Star Weekend. Baseball's American League East winning Baltimore Orioles have gotten stronger. They got All-Star right-hander Corbin Burns from the Milwaukee Brewers. For left-hander D.L. Hall, infield prospect Joey Ortiz, and a competitive balanced draft pick. From the Canadian Press, I'm Karen Rebo.